Okay, here we go. 188 horsepower equivalent. Just like the stock and kernel combustion engine. stop. So this all gives you exactly the same driving feel as a typical 1983 911 SC at 188 horsepower, which is nice. However, if you want more, we have a solution, and it's this. Let's get to the stoplight. I have just now toggled between the different calibrations we have here and have gone from number one to number four. And let's go. This is the full 500 Newton meters max torque being deployed. And as you can see and feel, even in fifth gear, the response is immediate. However, if you want to just cruise, it behaves very docilely. But if you shift back, It obviously has a lot of mid-range acceleration. In first gear we limit the amount of torque because um, there is a danger otherwise that you will break the synchro mesh in first gear. Um, but otherwise we build the torque fairly flatly. It's a very different torque delivery than an internal combustion engine. It's an electric vehicle. So mid-range punch of this car is much stronger than an internal combustion engine. It feels actually as if it's turbocharged. I have also a highly modified 930 turbo and this car in acceleration is very nearly as quick as that car. As you can see when you lift off, just like an internal combustion engine, the, the regen is engaged, so it simulates the same slowdown that you have an internal combustion engine. Everything else in the car uh, is as stock, so, uh, you know, if there is air conditioning, there will be air conditioning provided, electrical air conditioning. If there is power steering, then electrical power steering will be added as well. Uh, but all the functions, everything is the same. We've got the two dials here on the left, which look like the stock dials, but they've been changed to show temperature on the two cooling loops. One on the left is for the battery temperature, and the one on the right is for the electric motor and inverter. And then you have the range here, starting at 100%, going back. You have the revs, which are actual. You have the speed, obviously speedometer, and even the clock works. So everything stays the same. Well, and one of the things we learned in doing this development is that we bought an old Porsche and um, made sure that the driveline stuff was all restored or upgraded. We made the conscious decision not to restore the vehicle beforehand because it was going to be a development mule and not a show vehicle. In reality, if you are going to do a transplant, an EV transplant using our kit, 
we would strongly recommend that that is tied to a complete restoration of the vehicle because it will just feel that much tighter and more modern because of it. This vehicle's range is about, depending, <laughs> depending on how you drive it, is about maximum 250 miles. Um, I think realistically, depending on how you want to drive, drive it, it's between 200 and 250. Um, and depends, obviously, if you're in um, the power mode as we are now, yes, you will be traveling faster and using more energy. This has an onboard 6.6 .6 kilowatt uh, charger. You have the uh, gas cap flap there. The charging port is hidden under there. That is the charging um, strategy we have available with the kit today. We have, um, it's basically a 230 volt plug and, and current to the 6.6 .6 kilowatt hour onboard charger. Um, there is the capability at a later date to add um, charging at, at a much higher rate at one of the charging stations. That's not something, however, we have implemented yet or even really think it is necessary. We just charge overnight and typically in these classic cars, 200, 250 mile range is way more than they're actually going to drive them during, the, during a day, typically. Charging takes typically six to eight hours, so overnight. And cell balancing is performed automatically every time uh, you charge. This is very important because you need the cells balanced to within 0.1 of a volt. Uh, and remember, we have 96 cells, so that's quite a lot to balance. Getting the cells, all 96 cells, very precisely balanced during the build of the battery packs is the key criteria. And then monitoring them on a real-time basis uh, to ensure that they're staying balanced is really then the second most important part. Uh, the other thing which is important is that carbon fiber obviously has very good torsional strength, so it provides additional stiffening to the chassis and body shell, which is great because these cars are 45 years old and back then the crash testing that was done on such vehicles was much less complex than it is today. In, in this particular vehicle we've taken out all of the sound deadening while doing the conversion and have not put it back in. Um, definitely that's something that the installer should keep in mind that you need to keep the stock sound deadening in the vehicle or put it back in if you're restoring it as um, because you don't have the noise from the internal combustion engine to mask other noises you can hear everything else you can hear the road noise much more you can hear the manual transaxle much more and in reality this car when properly equipped with the appropriate sound deadening is actually very very quiet just like a Tesla is and as you can see it drives like a Porsche should okay we have also a calibration number three there you go put the car in third gear no clutch now this is in third gear. The idea is this is a traffic gear. You could still change up to fourth if you like, but you start in third and in traffic like in LA, this is all you need as you're driving on the 405 or the 5. What we've done to enable this gear is that we have increased in third gear down low from basically 500 RPM onwards we've increased the amount of torque that is being used, enabling you then to take off in third gear. We're doing 50 miles an hour. For, for traffic on the 405 or the 5, this is perfect. You will not need more than this. This means, of course, that your wife can drive the car as well.
as you can see the torque curve is, is, is terrific here. It's, it makes it such a nice car.